Today we're going to take some images that I have found on the interwebs and turn them into 3D printed ornaments for a tree that we have in our entryway. So if you like this type of content, please stick around and let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So it is coming up on Thanksgiving here in the United States. And I think you all know that I have this little tree in the entryway where we make ornaments for various holiday seasons here. And so today we are going to make some ornaments for Thanksgiving. It's been years that I've had this tree. It has been years that I've been making ornaments for this tree. And for whatever reason, I've never had the opportunity or I've never had the time or however you want to phrase it to make some ornaments for Thanksgiving. And so that is what we are going to do today. All right, so the process is going to go like this. So I found some images on the interwebs for Thanksgiving type things. I am going to import them into Fusion 360 do a little bit of manipulation, export them as an STL, send them over to the slicer, and then we're gonna print them. And then I will show you the outcome. So in this particular case, I found all SVGs, so I didn't have to trace the images using the Inkscape function that I have done videos about before. If you haven't seen those, I will link those above. So in this case, we just bring them directly into Fusion 360. So that's gonna make it a lot easier. And so I will show you the technique that I use to create these ornaments. It's a two color print at a minimum where we need to go in and do a little, some extrusions in Fusion. And then when we're doing the slicing, we add some additional commands in the slicer to force a color change in the printer. And so that's what I'm gonna show. And with that, let's go ahead and cut over to the computer and I will show you the pictures that I am using and the technique that I use to bring them into Fusion 360 and then all of the operations required to turn them into a physical outcome. All right, let's go ahead and cut over. Okay, well, we are in Fusion 360 here and as you can see, I have already imported a couple images onto the sketch profile here, but I'm gonna go ahead and import another one just to show you how it's done. So real quick, we will edit the sketch. And then under insert, we will select insert SVG. The little insert SVG pop-up happens here. Just select this little folder it'll take you to the last folder that you were in. So in this case, I wanna go up and I want to select miscellaneous, which in this case, miscellaneous is actually a cornucopia. So we'll select okay. Now that looks a little big relative to the rest of them, but we're gonna move it into position here and then shrink it down. Zoom in a little bit here. So this little handle right here allows you to resize your image very quickly without going through a lot of pain and fuss. So that's what we will use here. And generally these ornaments are around 50 millimeters tall or so. That's the optimal size for the tree that we have. So shrink it down a little bit more. So that's about the same size as the rest of them. That looks pretty good. We will select okay. Now you'll see that this image is green and all the rest of the sketch profiles are blue. What that means is that this image, when you import it, is fixed. You can't edit it, you can't move, you can't delete any of the nodes. I generally, whenever I import the images, the first thing I do is I unfix everything. So if I need to edit it, I can. So in this case, that's what we will do. We will select unfix. We will select our nodes here. We'll select the nodes and you'll see that it turns green there. All right. So we'll hit escape to get out of the constraint mode. And I do want to just remove this little circle here because it is really not required. And then I want to add a sketch profile to this, from this point to this point here. We'll do that. Select OK. Pull this out just a little bit. To line it up. And then we will delete these sketch lines. Oh, delete that one. Delete that one and delete that one. 
All right, that just cleans the cornea copy up a little bit. Okay. Okay, now that we have all of our images imported here, we actually wanna go back to the sketch and add that little hook that we're gonna to use to hang it on the tree. So we're gonna edit the sketch again here. I am gonna zoom in. I'm only gonna create one, and then what we'll do is we'll just copy it and paste it and attach it to all the rest. So R for rectangle, we will do a rectangle here. I'm gonna make it, uh, let's see, about 10 millimeters tall. Oh, probably 15 millimeters tall, there you go. And let's see, we're gonna do 0.4 millimeter extrusion width. So let's see, something round about that. So 3.2, probably bigger than that. So let's see what would be next. Uh, four divided, that's 10, so 4.0 would work. So four millimeters should work pretty well there. Okay, and then we wanna do a circle. Uh, we're gonna start with five millimeters is the inside circle, and then another circle, which is going to be, let's see, probably three millimeters bigger than that, so eight. That gives us a pretty good set of constraints there. All right, we're gonna pick this up and we're gonna move this right here. I am gonna say this point right here is coincident to the circle. And then this point here is coincident to the circle. And what that does is it actually attaches the circle to the rectangle. So now they move as a unit. Okay, so now that we have that done, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're going to copy these. Copy. Like Control V. Right here. Slide it over. Put it right about there. And we're just going to keep doing that for the rest of the items. Okay, so now we have all of the hooks copied. Now it's time to put them into the place that they need to be. So we'll just select it all here, slide it down and just attach it to the turkey's head. That should work very well. Do this again here, right about there. Should work pretty well. Okay, so we got pretty good profiles here. I'm gonna do some quick editing on these and I'll tell you why in a minute. So uh, right here, this little hook, we don't need that line right there anymore. Uh, and it's actually gonna cause issues when we go ahead and extrude. So we can actually select it and delete it. There you go. And we wanna do that on all of them. If we'd left that line there, then there would be this little half moon short sort of shape right here that we would have to select while we're extruding. And it's just easier to go ahead and fix the sketch now and delete that little line than it is to select that little half moon for every one of the things we want to extrude, so. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll finish the sketch. Now it is time to extrude the images into a 3D body. So what we're gonna do first is extrude all of the shape down by one millimeter, except for the little hole we just created. And then we will extrude the outlines of the shapes up a millimeter. And that'll give us a two millimeter thick outline of our shapes that we can then put in two separate colors. So let's go ahead and do that. E for extrude, we'll select all of the shapes here. Then we will go through and control click the circles to deselect them. Very straightforward. Okay, now I wanna say negative one millimeter. There you go, down, boom. There you go, now we have our base for all of our objects. So we gotta turn the sketch back on and next we want to extrude up one millimeter to provide all of the outlines. So let's go ahead and say E for extrude again, select our turkey, select our other turkey, our bread, our drumstick, I guess, corn, our little Native American, not that one, this one. And our cornucopia. Make sure that we have everything that we want selected. We didn't miss anything. Aha, there we go. 
select that guy. That would have been unfortunate. And that guy as well. And that guy as well. Didn't do so well uh, selecting those like I wanted. Okay, so now we want to we want to go up one millimeter here. There you go. Join operation is fine. It'll connect the two together. So we'll select OK. All right. Turn the sketch off. And we have our objects. Pretty neat. And you'll see here. Let me scroll back. There we go. You'll see here the hook actually really only goes up one millimeter. And then we're going to use a different color for the outline here. But it's considered the same part of the body. Okay. Next is to export these STLs. And the way to do that is we go into our tools tab here. We select make. And we want to turn off send to the 3D print utility because we just want the STLs. Select our objects and we hit OK. And then we simply output these where we want them to go. We'll put them in this STL uh, folder that I have created here. We'll call this uh, Turkey STL. There you go. Replace. And I'll continue doing this for all the rest of them. All right, now that we have all of our objects as ported STLs, we're gonna switch over to Simplify 3D and we're gonna import them and go ahead and slice them. All right, here we are in Simplify 3D. I have a blank project open here. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, save that project actually. Save as, thanks to, I want to import all of our STLs that we created here. So STL, bread, corn, cornucopia person. There we go. Import all of those. Boom, there you go. They look pretty good. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and arrange them in a, a particular pattern order that we want here. So let's see. We will need them. All right, so next. All right, now that I have everything arranged on the print bed here, I'm going to go ahead and add a process here. Add a new process. I'm going to call it uh, PR. HDPLA uh, 235 and let's see yes I want a 0.2 millimeter layer height which we already talked about a little bit I'm gonna bump up the infill here to about 50% these are small enough where it doesn't really matter too much um, but I'll just make it easier I think and let's see what do we got for extrusion with that all looks good layers Three, three, and three, that looks good. Additions, four millimeter offset for our skirt. I always use a skirt. I feel that it primes the nozzle a little bit, so I think it's good. So, uh, and it's just not a lot of filament for a little bit of extra peace of mind per se. Uh, support material, don't need. Temperature, we've got uh, 235, that should be good. We ramp up the cooling slowly. Um, probably don't need to do that slow of a ramp, but and we'll only bring it up to 70%. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Scripts, good speeds. Let's do this at 50. Good there, advanced. And right, well, we're gonna print the entire thing, that's fine. And I will show you how to insert the color change command in just a second. So we'll click OK. Actually, I wanna go back and say select models. I wanna select to deselect the corn and the person. Click OK, select OK, prepare to print. All right, so now we have our sliced model. And that's one of the things I love about uh, Simplify 3D, just how fast it slices. That's just amazing to me. All right, so let's go ahead and we got 10 layers, which is what we were expecting. A little bit of infill there, yeah. Could probably get rid of that infill if we just made the top and bottom each five layers, because that'll be the total of the 10 layers. But what do we got here in terms of print time? Our 41 minutes, not too terrible. Okay, we will save this.
Okay, now that we have the G code created, we need to go in and edit it to insert the color change command. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, we edit it, we put it here. It's this guy right there. So one thing that I like about Simplify 3D here is that it does put a lot of comments in the G code so you can find things very easily. And you can see here it has all the settings. So if you import this G code at a later date, all the settings will be pulled in to simplify and you won't have to guess what settings you had. So one thing that is very nice about Simplify 3D is right here is it tells you what layer it's printing on, right? So why is this important? Well, because we know we wanna print the entire first millimeter in one color and then the last millimeter in a, a second color. So what we wanna do here is search for, search for, Z equals 1.2, there you go. So that is layer six. That is the first layer of the second color. So before we do that, let's go ahead and say, we're gonna insert here, color change. There you go. And the color change command is M600 for the Prusa. And most of the printers that are on the market today can accept an M600 command. So there you go. That's all you have to do to print in two colors using the Prusa with only one nozzle. Okay, well, I've printed some of the ornaments and they turned out wonderfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of them. First off, we have our turkey. Look how awesome that looks there. And then we have our other turkey. Looks just as awesome. We have a turkey leg, of course, because who doesn't like turkey legs? And the cornucopia, right? Or should I say cornucopia? There you go, like that right there. And then we have our little person, our little Native American person, which I did in black and white. So I have not printed the corn yet. That's the next step. I need to dig through my stash of filaments and find some yellow filament. So uh, that's the next step, but that's it. Um, these are the ornaments. I think they turned out great. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, well, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it turned out very well, and I'm really happy with the results. So if you like this type of content, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, I would consider giving it a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below. Tell me why so that we can make future videos better. All right, if you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Thank you again for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. <clears throat> well, hopefully it doesn't hear that. Okay. Looking good there. <clears throat> All right, looking good there. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. We are going to first import. <clears throat> All right, so here we are in Fusion 60. As you can see from the screen, I already have a couple images imported, but we are gonna go ahead and import one real quick just to show you how it's done, super simple. So we're already editing the sketch here. <clears throat> Your sketch. All right, let's try this again. Okay, well we are in Fusion 3. All right, well, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I think it turned out really well. I'm really happy by the 